parlor and all the way down the very long porch of the Grand Hotel where we are right now. And that's where Nolan Finley is. He's out on the porch and he is with Wayne County Executive Robert Fricano and Stephen Henderson is there as well. Gentlemen, take it away. So I think this has got to be the most favored position you have ever been in before, right? Between the two editorial pages. How can I ever complain about that? It's your two that. biggest fans in the whole region, yeah, that's right? That's right. That's right. So Every you, Thursday or Friday, one of you always love to talk about us. So, so you're in a tough spot. A lot going on with you. Uh, you got a lot of challenges right now. Tell us, tell us where you're headed. Well, actually, this thing's uh, going very well in terms of uh, our investment. We have about 340 million just in the uh, first quarter in Wayne County, which has uh, been outstanding. Uh, we average about 500 million when you take away the big projects that you know come along once every 10 years or so. So we're way ahead of uh, schedule. Plus, uh, we just had an outstanding uh, report uh, from a health uh, from the, the, uh, the state came down, did a surprise audit for a month on Health and Human Services and found that uh, uh, the mental health was in the top uh, 95 percentile and gave them outstanding uh, marks for everything that was going on. And that's, in, that's important because you may be asked to step in to try to help sort out some of the health department problems in the city, right? Yeah, I, I see that they were going perhaps to a nonprofit model. I mean, I, I think they're playing with a lot. We are going to step in with the city on some issues such as uh, we're hoping the jail, there's a term sheet that we've actually offered to, to the city. It's a 30-year deal. Uh, taking the, uh, getting, getting them out of the detention business and just simply uh, having them go directly to the Wayne County Jail once somebody's arrested. Right now they go to a, a yeah, precinct. They go, like a holding yeah, they go to a holding facility and it's expensive and they do anything wrong. There's liability that attaches right away. So, you, you, I mean, we're, we're looking at those kind of issues. Uh, also in, um, in the uh, agreement, consent agreement, uh, looking at some of the appraising uh, situations. We're looking at a model that's interesting out in Grand Rapids that they're doing it through various type of maps and stuff, not the traditional way that they're looking at it. So we're working with uh, Andy Dillon on the, on the state treasurer for that. And yet, Bob, you do have people calling for your head. How does that hurt your effectiveness and hamper your ability to work with a commission that has sort of been emboldened by the scandal that's engulfed your office? I think at this point the commission, because it's an election year, uh, you know, wanted to make a statement and now actually we're moving on. Uh, at this point uh, we've had nothing but really positive investment and things are getting done. I mean, the payrolls are being met, the uh, vendors are being paid, contracts are being brought in front of the uh, commission. Uh, you know, we're doing the normal things that you're supposed to do and it's functioning uh, at this point. When you have a situation like what we're facing right now, uh, you have a couple of opportunists. You have political opportunists and you have uh, financial opportunists. It's uh, time for us to recognize some of that and to move forward and say, like any CEO, it's once you find out something's wrong, what do you do to correct it and you move forward? And that, that's exactly but, what we've done. But at this point, it's really a survivability question. I mean, you, as Nolan pointed out, there are a lot of people pushing to say, let's move on, let's do something different. At what point can you just say, to sort of declare that over and move on and not have to deal with the commission on your back, Nolan on your back, uh, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot of... There's Nolan there's, on my back. That's right. <laughs> It's just a lie. It's like the story that won't that won't go away at this point. How do you how do you move past it? Well, what you do is you open yourself up and you become as transparent as possible. You go and you talk to everybody, talk to people such as your own. We've been to both your editorial boards, and we'll continue to you know pursue that type of path. But the the thing is, is you move forward at this point. I've apologized for it. You know, I apologize at the end of the year during the state of the county, and you know, apologizing you know, that we should have had more oversight. But at the same time, once we started to take the corrective actions, let's move on and let's do the positive things that we know we have the ability to do. But Bob, as long as you have Fed still in that building and still going through your records, you can't really move on, can you? Do you have any sense of where this investigation is and whether any other shoes are going to drop? Well, yeah, I can't predict what, what they're going to come up with. I know from a personal standpoint that I feel very confident you know, in my own personal actions and what I've seen. And we're going to move forward. We've been completely cooperative. We're going to completely move uh, forward with them. You know, there's a number of corporations. For example, right now, J.P. Morgan and stuff, the SAC, you, you learn that you can work forward with, uh, you know, people looking over your records and things like that. That happens to corporations all the time. SAC, uh, there's a lot of uh, Department of Labor. They're always in looking at 
you know, records and things like that. And my own uh, uh, moral compass is that I know I can move forward because I know what I've done or not done, and I feel very confident about that. Now, you brought in uh, Jeffrey Collins, former U.S. attorney, to try to set up a better sort of architecture for ethical behavior and standards. Tell us where that all where that all stands right now. Well, we, we had a very uh, we had a, a, a strong ethical uh, standard to begin with. If somebody wants to work in the shadows and do something uh, that a system, no matter what, you know, we don't have subpoena power, we don't have wiretap power, and so, things like that. So you don't feel like the, there was well, it we, was lax before. This, we, no, we wanted to, we wanted to strengthen it anyway. We had done several things. Number one, we make everybody understand what their what their obligations are. They, every year they got to sign something saying what their obligations are. Jeff, before he came in as as county uh, as uh, the deputy. He would put on seminars with all the staff. This is what you can do. These are the questions, you know, that may, we even have questions that we hand out, frequently asked questions, what you can do and can't do, and, and things like that. We have, and we send out emails, and in fact, the Department of Human Resources sends out an email right before election time all the time and say, we remind you what you can do or not do uh, in the process. Uh, and so, and we've built on that. And, and continue to make sure that it's strong. So where did things break down? I mean, the, the way you somebody, sort of phrased if that. If somebody wants to work outside of the shadows, and believe me, you know, I've apologized, but it hurts me just as much, and I know it hurts the people of Wayne County even more. But when you trust some people and they break that trust, they should be held accountable. And I'm willing to do that for anybody that's done that, including, you know, a couple people that wanted to work in the shadows uh, at this point. Bob, we got to wrap up, but before we go, the the ongoing lawsuits you have um, with Turkia Mullen over her severance pay, um, the depositions that are coming out of that don't look all that good for you. It, it seems to indicate you knew pretty much what was going on. Were you an active participant in that severance deal? Well, I, as I said in the very beginning at the very first pro press conference, we believe that she had the same contract as her predecessor, which was a severance package that was up. As soon as we found out that it wasn't the same terms of it, if you look at it at the record within like a week, uh, within three days, actually I was still in Asia, we said give the money back, and they did. So I mean at that point, believing that the contract was the same. Was but Bob, there's a lot of stuff in that, there's a lot of stuff in that court case, a lot of stuff being, being revealed that indicates you all, yourself and the people in your office, were, were really trying to grease the skids for her in this job to get this airport job. Did you subvert, subvert the job search process at all? No, didn't subvert it at all. And I think what you look at is that if somebody, if an employee comes to you and they've been a good employee and they say, I'm going to you know, go for something, of course we're going to be supportive of them. And don't forget that the airport is the largest asset in Wayne County and we still own the property. So we want to make sure that that asset is protected in what we do. And I think if you look back, You'll see that the airlines were happy with her, uh, you know, initially when, when all this uh, came about and things were moving. But like, if you have an employee who says that they want to go, I don't know, maybe they want to go to the free press, if they've been a good employee. Good riddance to <laughs> Bob, Bob, we got to wrap. Would you, would you support them and say, okay, you know what, maybe you'll give, maybe you give them a call and say, you know, that is we gotta, a bad person. We got to wrap up, Bob, thanks. Okay, all right. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Christy, back to you. Great interview, guys. We so appreciate it. Nolan Finley, Stephen Henderson out on the porch of the Grand Hotel.